it seemed to me that you kind of lumped it, lumped in homosexuality with paraphilias. And I, I'm like oh, kind of going, mm-hmm. hang on a second. Can we just go back to that? Because why would you? Are these not two different things? Yeah. It, w- the question that came up for me thinking about that is like, compared to what? Right. It's almost a postmodern question because I'm like, well, compared to straight couples, I suppose all of these things are an anomaly to some degree. But I'm really curious about like, like Stella saying, how did you decide what kinds of sexual proclivities would get lumped together in the way you think about this? Basic, basic science. I mean, I didn't do and have no need to do anything outside the pretty routine scientific method. We start with the null hypothesis. Okay. Period. No exceptions. The hypo- null hypothesis is there are no differences until you show me that there are. Okay. That means everything gets lumped together, period. All of it. And it doesn't matter how anybody feels about it, if anybody's offended about being, you know, associated with it. This is just basic scientific method. Because if I start with this group is different from that group, there's no way to go backwards. There's no way to prove that they're the same. We start with the theory that they are the same and only separate them when the evidence shows or that the evidence demands the only way to explain the evidence is to show that they are different groups. Even though we feel differently about these groups here in society, and it's perfectly fine that we do, that doesn't automatically mean that that they have different things in the brain. That's, as we call it, an empirical question. You said it was a blob of cells. Oh, 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 hang on, hang on. No, 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 no. The uh, established already scientific principle is that, well, why don't we lump the regular everyday sexual people in with the atypical sexualities, which is to say, why Mm -hmm. am I starting with those two groups? Why isn't just one great big group of human or male? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that uh, that is evolution. It's the regular everyday attracted to the opposite sex of reproductive range. Well, that's what evolution would select for. So we only have a question when well, then how do we have the presence of these things that Got don't? Got right, it. so we only so have... Anything a qu- right, so anything that's unrelated to sexual reproduction would Anything go, that evolution wouldn't select wouldn't, for okay, wouldn't select becomes for. a question. Right, Got so it. if, it's, if it. evolution isn't the thing that's maintaining the existence of Got these it. things, then okay. what is? So we start with a question, and now we can ask whatever question we want. And now it's, where are the lines? What, and the real question is, ultimately, what goes with what? Which of these are meaningful clusters? Mm-hmm. Is it gay versus everybody else? Is it everybody else is their own thing and they're all completely, inde- uh, completely independent? Or are there something, or do they go together, you know, in certain clusters and we have a limited number of clusters and subclusters? Again, this is, to a scientist, this is the science of taxonomy. Okay. And it's well established, and it is exactly the same thing, exactly the same kind of procedures a scientist would use to classify, pick your phenomenon on the planet. Bacteria, birds, oh. rock strata. Sure. We okay. know things are similar or different if we can detect reliable differences that we can replicate to show so- that, ah, this began a different way, and it's going to lead to something different, and it responds differently to different kinds of treatment. If it fits those criteria, then that's a meaningful way to separate these things. 